Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the first in a series of tutorials on advanced research applications for people with a background in life sciences who don't necessarily have coding experience. Uh, my name is Caleb and I'm working with a team of Eric Yang and Max Weil. We are all uh, undergraduates in the University of Washington bioengineering program. And we noticed that a lot of life science researchers and students have very adept ideas of what they can do with coding, but they don't necessarily have the technical experience to make that happen. Uh, our goal here is to teach you a little bit more about some advanced research applications using Python and to educate you in a way that will allow you to go on and apply these to your own research applications or your own personal projects. Um, so to begin, this is the first tutorial and it's on a subject that I think is really interesting. Uh, it's on sequence alignment. Um, so I'm going to pull some slides from the University of Washington computational biology course to show you a little bit about why this is important. Um, these are some of the traits supported in 23andMe. I mean, there's, there's tons, there's black hair, balding spots, uh, and it goes down to even ice cream flavor preference. Now, there's also more serious things like diseases, but all of these boil down to pretty much your DNA sequence, whatever DNA sequence you have, uh, your, your genotype. And we can learn a lot from your genotype. We can learn how related you are to other animals. We can make these big phylogeny trees saying that you are more related to a chimp than you are to a mouse than you are to a puffer fish. Um, so this is really important to understanding the relationship between humans and other animals and genes themselves because it tells us how much something has changed and how alike something is in both structure and function uh, to another example that we might have researched more uh, so we can make inferences about the function of a new gene. And this is really important to understanding things in, in, in relative terms in biology. So obviously sequencing is a very big problem, uh, but we solved it in a kind of interesting way. Um, I, I encourage you to go to the GitHub and, and read up on gene sequencing and protein sequencing to see how these things are particularly effective in modern biology research that you really, really can't get away from them. And we're going to be building one of the tools that has allowed uh, modern biology to come so far. Um, and we're going to be building a protein sequence alignment tool. Uh, so protein sequence alignment will tell us the similarity between two proteins. And that's a little bit more advanced than just gene sequence alignment, um, because we have more information about uh, amino acids and the ways that amino acids might have changed particularly. Um, and in genes, sometimes you get silent mutations. So this will, this will be a lot more telling about the function of a specific protein uh, in an animal. So we want to make a tool that will align two sequences uh, for us in fairly reasonable time. And so our, our engineering constraints here are that we need to aligned to arbitrary protein sequences from a FASTA file, uh, and you need to be able to use the command line to do it fairly quickly. You know, there's, there's lots of, I, I'm, I'm sure most scientists out there have some experience with the command line. So we're going to make this intuitive to them, uh, and we're going to make this a command line tool. So first thing you really need to do is to make sure that you have the right versions and tools for this. So here we're just going to be using Python. Uh, we're going to be using a Python version greater than three. So I'll type in mine. Um, and I have Python 3.6. Uh, you want to be using any version of Python really above three here, but 3.6 and 3.7 are kind of the standard. Um, you're going to want to be using a text editor too. My, uh, my program of choice is PyCharm down here. So I will take this first tutorial that you should have downloaded. Um, and if you don't, haven't, do that right now. And we're just going to drag it into PyCharm. And it'll show us this right here, uh, where you've got your solution code, but we're not going to work with that. We're going to be doing this project in the working code directory. 
So we're going to build this tool from scratch. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we know how it's going to interact with our users. And that's going to also give us a really easy way to test things. Um, so if you don't have your Python working or you don't have a text editor, pause the video here, go download it. There's links in the YouTube description for uh, how you can set up Python on your own local computer, whether that's Windows, Linux, or Mac. Uh, and then download your favorite IDE. I have a couple down here. So PyCharm, Sublime, you could even learn Vim if you wanted to, or if you're already a tech user, you know, use Vim, whatever. Uh, it's all the same. You're just going to be putting text in a box and then telling Python to run the code. Um, and that's, that's something that kind of, I hope, <laughs> I hope, I hope it's simpler. Um, or that sounds simpler to our, our, our life science researchers, our non-tech users than you thought it would be, but it's really going to be that simple. So just make sure you have Python uh, and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our project in a way that I like to set up my projects. Um, we're gonna make our runner file and we're gonna call it align.py. Um, and we're going to also make a directory um, called services. And so services is we're gonna, where we're going to keep all of our helper functions, um, but we're not going to really use any of them right now. Right now, we're just going to make the command line interface. So the first thing to do, uh, as always, is just you know write your name. Make sure that everybody knows that this is your code and this is going to be uh, not abused for any reason by anybody else. Um, it's just nice to have your little signature there. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do uh, import arg parse. This is one of my favorite uh, Python tools. Um, and then from OS import path. Uh, no, uh, from os.path import is dear and is file. OK, so that's going to be important later. Uh, and now we're just going to start writing our command line tool. And you'll see really how easy this is to get to get to command line tools working. Um, so we're going to define main. And we're just going to print hello as like a little uh, check. And then we're going to say if name equals main. Uh, Okay, so this is basically just telling our program, if you are the program that we are directly running, if you're the main file, uh, run everything below this. Um, and so we're going to run main, and we're going to do Python. We're going to change our directory first to working code, and Python uh, line.py, and it's going to print hello. So. We've got a working structure, and now everything within this main method is going to be run anytime we run the program. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our parser equal to our parse.argument parser. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to add a little description here, and we're going to say protein uh, alignment CLI. And now we're going to add our arguments to our parser. So parser.add argument. Uh, and we're going to make this uh, sequence file. I'm just going to make this file one. And it's going to be a required argument. Uh, and we're just going to store. We're going to store that argument for later. Um, and then if your users need help, I'll just say, uh, Location of the first file sequence. Let's say FASTA. FASTA is a, a commonly used uh, sequence file type. So we're just going to say the location of the first FASTA file to log to, not a login, a line. OK, great. Uh, and then we also need a second file for our second sequence. So we're just going to take that and copy and paste it down here. Sequence file 2. Uh, we're going to store that. And this is going to be the location of the second file. Um, and that should be it for now. Um, we're just going to say args equals 
parser dot parse args. Um, and then if not uh, is file, and that's this is where we get our earlier import args dot sequence file one and is file sequence file two. We're going to put a little parentheses around there so we make sure that we're uh, doing everything right. Args dot sequence file two. Okay. Uh, we're just going to say print uh, invalid sequence path. Okay. And then exit with an error code one. Um, otherwise, uh, we're just going to say we're going to print uh, commands entered successfully. Okay, great. So now we're going to run this again, and it's going to give us an error because we don't have our sequence files here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do something a little bit lazy. I'm going to take the data from this directory and I'm just going to copy paste it into our working code. Uh, and we're going to take our seek one and seek two dot fasta. And we're going to say data slash seek one dot fasta and data slash seek two dot fasta. Yep. And it says commands entered successfully because we've entered two files. Um, and this is our sequence one, and it is a, a file, and we have not given it the means to read this file yet, but it knows that we've given it a file. So this is our full uh, alignment tool. Um, well, it's the, it's, it's the starting interface for our alignment tool, at least, and we're going to build on it in the next tutorial. But um, I'll see you in the next tutorial, uh, and thanks for tuning in.